Good morning. Welcome to the daily writing, daily reading, writing. So um, the moon is in Pisces today. Everything is a little bit more fluid than it has been. It feels a little bit more fluid um, than like the last couple of days where we're just kind of trying to get started and get going. Um, your emotions might be a little bit more heightened today and maybe through this week your emotions might be a little bit more heightened just um, because Jupiter's squaring Chiron and um, as like in the next couple of days and with this uh, Venus sextiling Mars it everybody's getting along better but um, you still could get triggered you know what I mean it's like like, um, it, it's, it's almost as if, uh, everything's going, like you're going along on your day, everything's going really, really fine. And all of a sudden somebody yells at you from like, you're just minding your own business and they like yell at you from their car to you. And then it like triggers you. It like comes out of the blue kind of thing. Right. So like your day is just hunky dory and just fine. And like, there aren't any triggers and you're ate your breakfast and you're drinking your water and everything's going well and you got your yoga done and everything is perfect and then like something's going to come out of the blue and trigger you that kind it's it's and and that's sort of like the test right like how are you going to react to this but that's sort of the energy today where you're sort of just minding your own business and something just pops up out of the <laughs> out of the blue um but it should be a pretty smooth sailing and calm energy um for the majority of you right now, uh, if you are really super unsure of yourself right now and unsure of the path that you're going, you might have a little bit of difficulty this week. Um, <clears throat> but the reason why you would have the difficulty is because your soul or your spirit and the universe, they're all sort of creating together this opportunity for you Um to get on the right track and to start to know yourself and to start to feel those feelings and like that's why this kind of that's that's what the cosmos are here for it's for support so yesterday when i talked about jupiter moving into capricorn everybody got sort of like up in a frenzy like oh my gosh where's my first house and what does this mean for me and what does this mean for me so your rising sign which would also be called your ascendant in your birth chart now if you don't know your birth time um, I would just go, like, if you know that you were born in the morning, pick, like, 8 a.m. If you know that you were born at night, pick, like, 9 p.m. or something. But, um, like, the general rule that I use if somebody doesn't know their birth time, I just do go with noon. And it's not 100% accurate, but um, it's better than not having anything. Um, but if you can find out if it was morning or night, even... That's better. Like if you don't know an exact time, but you know if it's morning or night, you can still at least get a little bit closer. Um, but so your rising sign, your ascendant, that's your first house. Okay. And if you're looking at your chart, everybody has 12 houses in their chart. You don't have planets in every single house. Somebody might. That would, I've never seen somebody's chart, a person's chart that has a planet in every single, every single house in their chart. Um, so, but when you're, when you're looking at your chart, your rising sign is going to be your first house. And then you'll see like where each of the houses are, right? So my rising sign is Libra. And this is just an example. This is how I want you to think of it. Look at your rising sign. That'll be your first house. And then I want you to see what house Capricorn would represent for you. Not what planets are in Capricorn, but what house it is. What's the number of the house? Like I'm, my, my rising sign is Libra. That's my first house. My second house is Scorpio. My third house is Sagittarius. My fourth house is Capricorn. Okay. So when you figure out that house, then you can Google, you can figure out what house Capricorn is because that's the house Jupiter will be in for you. Then you can Google transit of Jupiter in my dot, dot, dot house, whatever house it is. Okay. So that's how you're going to look for the Jupiter transit and how it might affect you. I should have explained that better yesterday, but I was like really in a hurry and I was excited for all the information to give you guys. So I wasn't able to do it. Um, so that's how you do that. And, um, yeah, I think that was the only thing that I wanted to clear up from yesterday. 
Um, and, and, you know, oh, this is the other thing. Yes, I was going to say, now remember with a transit, when we talk about these big transits that are happening, the transits and the cosmos, it's there to support your journey. It's there to kind of give you a roadmap on the energies that you can use to, to um, elevate your journey, to um, alleviate stress in your life, to allow you, you know, make more money, do this, whatever, right? It does that that planetary transit does not mean that it's going to do it's not going it's not like a magic formula that's going to do the work for you. You actually have to do the work. The energies are here to support you. That's why we talk about these cosmic transits. And um, it, it, because I don't want you to look at this as well, Jupiter didn't do anything for me, or Jupiter better start giving me something, blah blah blah. You know. Like, whenever we talk about a transit, people are like, Jupiter better, Jupiter, Saturn better, Pluto better. And I'm like, guys, it's not the planet's fault that you don't have money. It's not, the <laughs> there's there's so much more that is involved than that. And for you to rely, that's you relying on an outside source to fix your life. Okay? Because the cosmos, that's the outside, right? And if we're relying on the cosmic atmosphere and the way the planets transit in our lives, to fix our lives, then we got more problems than we think we do. Because that has nothing to do with it. It's a support system and it's a roadmap to help you get through your life as the transits go. Okay? So keep that in mind when you're looking stuff up. Also, um, you are more than your sun sign. And I will probably do <laughs> I will probably do a series of videos at some point. I've been getting a lot of little nudges on doing different things, but I'll probably do a series of videos. It's been building up to that um, on, on just the basics of your chart. Because, you know, let's be honest, not everybody strives to be an astrologer. But if you know some pretty basic things about your chart, um, you can kind of see where the roadmap is. I learn new things every day. I am a student of astrology. I'm not a professional astrologist, astrologer, <laughs> astrologer. Um, I'm, I'm still just a student. So that's why I haven't offered like public services, because I'm still learning myself. And when I feel confident within my abilities, because I don't want to be a professional anything if I don't have confidence in, in what I can do, right? If I don't have the, the, the right kind of knowledge to give you, I am not going to ask for money for it. So there you go. Um, but I, I will probably do something about the basics. And so I do want you guys to remember that when, when you're watching your, your videos throughout the month, um, look for your rising and your moon sign. You do not need to have um, a, an exact date or exact time for your moon sign or your Mercury or your Venus. Um, but all of those things kind of like make make up your personality, kind of make up who you are. And what, and what you're going to present out into the world and what you're going to do in the world. So, um, you know, always watch your rising and your moon signs as well. The rising, the rising sign is going to be like how you're relating to people in your outside world. Your sun sign is going to be how you're relating to yourself. And your moon sign is your emotional aspect and how you're relating emotionally to yourself and to other people. It's kind of your true self. It's like, it's like the part that nobody really sees you know, in the light of day. That's why it's your moon sign, your emotions. All right, somebody's really serious about making some dough. About, there are some like really big gains here that somebody's like super serious about. And there, there's tons of ideas, it feels like, flowing to this person. The Queen of Swords. So somebody's being really, really discerning. Now with the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords here, I think my only kind of, um, cause this is really fantastic. I love that somebody's really being focused on, on, um, getting things completed and getting things done and having, you know, gains, right? That Ace of Pentacles gains there. Um, I, I like that, but my concern or like my, um, little, like the thought that I had, the little spark that I had when I was watching this is, Try not to be too logical about it. You want to really allow yourself to feel through this as well because um, your feelings won't lie, right? Like you can talk yourself into, this is what I mean by that. You can log logically, like for example, talk yourself into 
taking a job because it gives you more money and it's going to give you a lot of opportunities and you can move up the ladder and you're going to have a better name. Like you can logically talk yourself into that. But if you, if you really think about it and you really, really feel deep down and you say, okay, um, this is a, this looks really good on paper, but when I really think about it, deep down, is this job going to create havoc in my life? Is this job going to mean that I have to um, work extra hours? Does this job mean I'm going to be away from my family more? Like really feel through the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords too, because so often in our lives, we can get caught up in what seems like the golden ticket and something that's really, really pretty and presented to us in a beautiful package and yet um and yet it was gold plated all along right so like it really wasn't wrapped up in this beautiful it, it, it's not solid gold all the way through it's not something that's going to stand the test of time it could um easily crumble under pressure right so it's a situation that's being presented to you and it looks really really good and it's not that i don't want you to not take these opportunities in these situations. It's not that I want, I don't want you to do that. I just want you to evaluate what taking on this opportunity or seeing what this is and going for it, what that it, how it's going to impact your life and how it's going to, um, like, where do you need to create space to bring, do you need to release something? There it is. Do you need to release something from your life to create space for it or are you taking on too much and it's almost like trying to have more than 24 hours in a day right so this is a time with temperance and the fool to really really evaluate exactly like what this opportunity means to you um because it could be something that you've been waiting for for a very very long time right and it could be something that's just like, you know it's perfect for you, but it'll crumble under the stress. It's almost like when there's too much weight on a bridge and it starts to crumble, you know, over time and over, you know, under under all of the stress of everything. Um, you know, where, where can you not compromise yourself and make you feel like you're stuck? Um, but here's the thing is if you're a person that's in the Five of Cups state right now and you're sort of thinking back, it, like, I don't want you to choose anything out of desperation. When you make a decision, when you're anxious, when you make a decision, when you're stressed out, when you make a decision um, while you are um, frustrated or angry, like when you are super highly emotional about something, five of cups, thank you very much. When you are paying attention to things that, that, that happened in the past or didn't happen in the past, didn't happen in the past, and you make a decision from that point of view, you're not, you're not doing it in a rational kind of way that is like you want to make the decision with your soul. So I need you to calm yourself down first. You know what I mean? It's like when people, when people quit jobs like that, like you get in an argument with your boss and you're like, you know what, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. And they just like, I quit, I quit, I quit, I quit. And they walk out like that's making a split second decision based on an emotional response that you have with something. So I don't want you to make the, any kind of decisions based on an emotional response. That's I think that's why the Queen of Swords is here is to be the logic. But at the same time, I want you to feel your emotions and based on what you know is right for you inside. Not what's going to be right for your environment. Not what's going to level your environment up. What's going to level you up. You see? Okay. So let's clarify. Let's see what this Queen of Swords is. I know that that's kind of heavy. Yeah. And, and really make sure that you are laying it out on the table. Like, because this feels very much like a negotiation. Or it feels like you're leveling up or you're starting something new or something's being given to you. Or there's some kind of new um situation or or uh opportunity that that's here for you right so i really want you to make sure that you're getting all of the details and you are voicing anything and everything that's a concern to you but i want you to make sure you're getting all of the details i want you to make sure 
that you are um, being smart about, you know, not just emotionally, because you could take a job that looks really pretty on the outside out of an emotional response of stress, because you know that I've done that before. Like I was, I was like really down and out and I was a waitress at the time and I was barely making ends meet. And then after like months of my resume being out at certain companies, I got a job at a telecommunications company that like it was the perfect job, right? And I started it right before the holidays and that, and I was there for like seven years, but it was one of the most stressful jobs that I've ever had because I had more responsibility put on me than I was getting paid for, first of all. But the other, but I mean, but at the time it got me out of the place that I was in. So yes, everything that we do and every decision that we make on our journey is going to catapult us forward in some way. Staying still and staying stagnant just because you're comfortable, that's why the hanged man is here. Because staying still and stagnant, that's not going to catapult you anywhere on your journey. But if you need to have a healthy pause so that you're just like, you know, let's see how this is going to benefit me in my life. Is it going to be more of a hassle or more of a benefit? Like, I know people that... Um, yeah, see, I mean, is this, is, it, it's like the breakdown structure of not taking on something that looks really pretty on the outside. I love it when the cards work with me. The tower on that ace of pentacles. If this literally was like something that was like an opportunity presented to you and it was wrapped up in a tiny little bow... You need to go with your gut feeling on this. And it can't be, you can't, it, it and because I feel like whatever opportunity this is, it's going to be an amazing opportunity, but I don't think it's going to provide a lot of material gains. And that's probably why, um, like, at first it might look like it, but that's not why you should be doing this. That's what this is. That's not why you should be taking this opportunity because I feel like there is an opportunity for you to evolve and for you to move up in some way. And but you you have to it's almost like the having faith, right? How do we how what do I always say? Having faith in something is knowing that God is going to show up. I think I even said that yesterday. Not hoping that God shows up, but knowing that God shows up. So even if this opportunity like I don't know, it it feels very much like, I don't want you to, I don't want you to have expectations of it. That's what this is. I don't want you to put an expectation on something that um, possibly may not be, like it's going to benefit you, but not in the way that you think it is. And if you, if you, continue to think that it's going to benefit you in like a monetary way or in that way, you're going to be really, really disappointed. You're going to be really, really disappointed, but it is a benefit. That's what the, that's the thing though. It's like, um, it's like an internship. Like if you start, that's way too many cards. I'm not going to take all of those. Sorry. I'm going to shuffle again for the ace of swords. Um, it's kind of like having an internship where it's sort of a thankless job, you know, that's what it feels like. Okay. And, and here's the thing is it's going to your, and this is what you're not really seeing. Cause I think there's a small fear about getting yourself into it, into, or starting it, or you think that there's going to be some kind of disaster or something like that. But the eight of swords and the strength card, I don't know if you can see that they're really pastel colors. The eight of swords and the strength card on the ace of swords I feel like the things that you're not seeing is like how you're going to grow. The evolution of this strength card is very real when it's coupled with an ace of swords because the knowledge, like the knowledge that you're going to gain and, and the communication that you're going to gain and all of this stuff here, it's like kind of, it's, it's leveling you up. But with the eight of swords, you're not really seeing that. And maybe you're in a situation where, um, you wanted things to level up. You wanted things to get better 
And because you had a certain expectation of what that was going to look like, that's why the tower's here. And you're not actually, it's, it's the blessing, right? It's, it's the rejection is protection blessing. If the universe said no to you recently about something or that was, you know, or, or the universe presented you with something and you thought the outcome was going to look different than it does now, just know that you are being protected. There's something bigger there for you. Um, so that's a, that's a message for some people. There's something much bigger waiting for you. So let's see. Temperance. Yeah, and see, intuitively, you already know that this is, you're going through a healing process. Like your soul, your spirit is already fully aware that this season, because temperance is about, is the Sagittarius card, right? Sagittarius season. But this season is, is about um, really allowing yourself to, um, to balance and focus and and go inward a little bit right to pause i know that there are several signs that through december there will be there's there's going to be a pause right or you're going to feel paused while the world is moving around you it's almost like the chaos ensues whereas you're just kind of in this state of like i'm not going in any of in any direction i'm just going to stay right here right um so there are several signs and it could already be starting, you know, I mean, it, it could be starting now. It's because as the energies move more into earth, you know, the Capricorn earth, um, we will feel a little bit grounded. They're going like the water, like I feel like the, the fire signs and the water signs are going to have a really hard time during the season because they just want to break free and they're going to have a really hard time doing that. Um... Be honest who you're collaborating with. I feel like there's a lot, there's a lot that's being presented to you right now in a collaboration kind of way. Um, and with the moon there, Man, I almost want to ask some of you if you recognize if there are any hidden enemies around you, like people who will be your friend and they don't like consciously try to hurt you, but they start to trigger you in ways that really kind of like pushes that button. Um, if you're surrounded with people that are very triggering, like they're perfectly nice individuals, but they drive you insane and they're very, very triggering. They're there to teach you some kind of lesson, like tolerance or patience or accountability or something like that, right? Like, I want you to start to see it in a different perspective. I feel like there's somebody um, that needs to hear that. I feel like somebody needs to know that whoever's triggering them today or right now you're learning a lesson about like your own tolerance of people or your own um, tolerance of yourself even. I almost feel like they might be like the reason why they're triggering you is there's something about you that you need to change. Like maybe they, maybe you actually act like this person and you don't even realize it and them triggering you is supposed to show you that. And um, I almost want to say that I'm going to say that out loud that somebody needed to hear me say that. And um, it, it was sort of like you don't you didn't realize it. That was a that was an aha moment for you. Like, oh damn, I'm learning. In every single interaction, in every single situation that you're in in your life, there's always a lesson to learn within it. So remind yourself of that every time you feel a little bit uncomfortable in life. So we have the Wheel of Fortune on the Five of Cups. Um, Don't hold on to the past, you guys. I don't, I, <laughs> the more I say that, the more I want to be like, stop it. <laughs> stop holding on to the past, you guys. The four of pentacles on the wheel of fortune and the five of cups. Now, it, 
if you don't feel like this shift is happening for you, I feel like there are a few things that you need to release. Because there's an energy shift where some really big things are coming in, some new ideas, some new opportunities that I really want you to be able to flow with. And um, this isn't about making money and it's not about being rich and it's not about the material gains, although that's always really nice and it's nice to have creature comforts like that. But I guarantee you, if you follow your path and you follow your passion and you follow what you're supposed to do, all the material gains will come because you'll appreciate it that much more. And those material gains will look different to you then, right? It's not going to be the same. You're going to be able to look at it all in a different kind of way. So that's what I want you to recognize, that you don't have to hold on so tightly to what happened in your past, and you don't have to hold on so much to what's going on in your life right now. If you can realize and recognize that everything is in a constant flow, and everything is moving, and we're always learning lessons, and to not have expectations of things to, you know, start, or, or for things to... create, don't have expectations of the outcome. This is a journey and it's a marathon. And there are a lot of little destinations along the way, but the one big grand destination is freedom. And ultimately that's where I'm headed. I don't know about you. If you want to get on the train with me, there's plenty of spots. Um, but the only way to freedom is through surrender. And there's a lot of holding on to things in this reading and a lot of not surrendering. So allowing yourself to see that when you have opportunities arise in your life, even if it doesn't look like it's going to be a really big monetary gain or a really big this or you're not going to have like instant gratification rights or whatever, um recognizing and seeing that that instant gratification is temporary anyways. And these opportunities can give you so much more than just surface level, but you have to be willing to trust it and have faith and um, find out why you're being so annoyed by life. I love you guys. Have a wonderful day. Um, I still... Um, have openings for readings in the second half of December. Um, I will not be doing personal readings the week of Christmas because Christmas is in the middle of the week and that's going to be really, really weird. Um, I might do like one or two, but I'm not going to do a whole lot. So um, get your personal reading in now so you can be scheduled before everything fills up. So you, but if you do order a reading, it might be scheduled like the last week of December. So just, you know, be aware of that. But that's like the only spots that I have left, right? The last two weeks. And if I'm only doing like one or two readings in the third week, then the last week is going to be um, the time to get it. So if you want to get a reading in before the new year, if you want to see how the new year is going to start, if you want to do like whatever you want to do, they're all on sale. I love you guys. Um, oh, and the jewelry. Um, it's going pretty, it's, it's, gonna, it's going. So um, if you want to get your jewelry in before Christmas so you can get it as a Christmas present or send it as a Christmas present, now is the time to do it. It's usually delivered or it's usually shipped um, within like five days of ordering. So you'll get it within like a week of ordering. So if you want to get it before Christmas, now is the time to do it. I love you guys. Have a, a wonderful day and um, we'll see you soon. Bye.